Hi, I'm Hayley Victoria and welcome back to my Crime and Policing channel. In today's session, we're looking at forensic toxicology and we're linking it to a case. So we've done toxicology before. That's when we look and analyse, identify and quantify toxins in people's bodies, such as poisons, drugs, alcohol, stuff like that. Today, we're looking at poison. And we're going to start by delving into a Halloween crime because it is the season. And in Halloween, a lot of the weirdos come out. I don't just mean as goths. I mean, we get some serious freaky stuff happening. Maybe it's the moon. I don't know. But yeah, a lot of freaky stuff goes down. A lot of crimes are committed. Some of the best horror films that are Halloween, right? I'm going to go watch one of those tomorrow at cinema. I'm not going to say what it is. No spoilers. So yeah. Let's start. We're going to go back to 1974. So 1974, um, I wasn't alive back then, but I imagine it was a lot nicer, you know, a lot less crime, a lot. The streets were nice and your neighbourhoods, you could leave your doors unlocked, all those kind of things that you wish you could still do now, right? Well, we're in Deer Park in Texas. We're going to the United States for this case in 1974. So it was a Halloween like every Halloween always is for two families. So there were the O'Briens and the Bateses. They were next door neighbours and they had both had young children and, you know, they were, they were a really nice family. So the, the O'Briens, uh, the father, Ronald O'Brien, he was a deacon at the local church. He was uh, an optician. So, you know, he got, got a fairly good job. He's a deacon at the church. He even sang in the choir. These are like you know, upstanding community members and the children were well liked and well loved. It was a really nice neighbourhood with really nice people, right? Um, hmm. Well, there was something wrong in this neighbourhood and that night tragically took the life of one of the children in this party. So after dinner at the Bates' house, Ronald and his uh, children, Elizabeth and Timothy, and the Bates children all went trick-or-treating together. So in, in America, Halloween is huge, right? Even bigger than it is over here. It's massive. Everyone loves it. I mean, we like Halloween in England, by the way, too. But we don't go quite to town like you guys do in the States. But um, we still enjoy it over here, you know. But in America, it's massive. And um, I've seen the videos and things. And I really want to come to the States, by the way, for Halloween because it does look incredible. I did Vegas once a couple of years ago at Halloween. And that was insane. So I'd love to see what it's like in a proper community. Um yeah, so it's Halloween, the kids want to go trick-or-treating, they're so excited about it because it's the one night of the year where you can eat as much sweets, as much candy as you want. You can go nuts on that stuff, right? So yeah, the kids were so excited, they all went out trick-or-treating. So there they're going house to house, collecting loads of sweets or candy, shoving it into their little bags and off they are to the next house. This is a lovely um, time of year where lots of stuff's happening, lots of festivity, all the kids are happy. It's just a lovely thing, especially in a nice community like there was in Deer Park in Texas. Um, there was one house, however, where the families went um, up to it and um, Mr. Bates waited at the um, at the end of the street while um, Ronald O'Brien and all the kids went to the door. So, you know, like, I'll take this one. Don't worry about it. Went to the door, knocked to the door. There was, there was nobody in. Um, so the kids ran back down as if to go to the next house. Then Ronald walked down a little bit later and he's like, ah, oh, it's got like five bags of pixie sticks. So pixie sticks are these like tubes, very thin cylindrical tubes, just full of sugar, powdered sugar. I've seen them on them um, toddlers and tiaras where these kids just neck these pixie sticks and they're wired. So it's just sugar in these pixie sticks. So he got five packets of these pixie sticks and he said to his mate, Mr. Bates, oh, um, yeah, they weren't there and on time. So the kids had already left by the time the people came to the WDs. They told me to give them to the kids. Oh, cool. And not long after it started chucking it down, it was raining and they were like, oh, let's call it a night, guys. And they went home. So getting ready for bed, little Timothy, um, so Timothy O'Brien was like, oh, dad, please. Can I have one more sweet? Just one more sweetie, please. And his dad uh, was like, yeah, sure. He opened him up the packet of pixie sticks and gave him a pixie stick. Well, he opened it up for him, gave it to him, and pretty much straight away, little Timothy starts, he's like hunching over, and he's in agony, absolute agony. And he's being violently sick, he's having seizures, he's convulsing, he's being sick. And less than an hour later, Timothy had been pronounced dead. So in the ambulance, on the way to the hospital, he'd been pronounced dead. Massive investigation ensues, right? So 
instantly the police were like, what's happened? And Ronald O'Brien's like, I gave him this pixie stick and that was it. He's just vomiting, he's convulsing, he's, he's gone. So immediately the police found all these pixie sticks. So luckily, none of the other children in that party had taken any of these pixie sticks. None of them had eaten any. Um, and when they did an autopsy on little Timothy, they found enough cyanide in his body to kill two adults that had come from these sticks. When they analysed them, remember we're looking at forensic toxicology, they found enough cyanide, potassium cyanide, to kill two adults per stick. That's a lot of cyanide. Um, none of the other children were affected, like I said, but poor Timothy did lose his life that night. Police were searching for this mad candy killer, the candy man, they were saying, who'd been poisoning children at Halloween. So this massive thing in his shoes. And Ronald's like, I can't remember which house it was. We went to so many, I cannot remember. The police were like, well, you need to start remembering because someone's killed a child, your son. They went for a walk around the area with the police and he's like, oh, it was that one. That was the house there, definitely. Well, the police found Courtney um, Melvin, who lived at that house. And now Courtney had a solid gold alibi. Courtney wasn't there. Courtney was at work as an air traffic controller until 11pm that night. Not there when um, Ronald said he was. Oh dear. Well... The police did a lot of other investigations as well, and they discovered that Ronald O'Brien was actually in £78,000 worth of debt, which was surprising, right? This upstanding pillar of the community kind of guy. And also, interestingly, in January of that year, he'd taken out $10,000 of life insurance on each of his children. In September of that year, he upped it by another 20 grand. And then just days before Halloween, he upped it again by another £20,000. It's starting to look a bit fishy, isn't it? Well, um, they, the day after Timothy had died, his father called the insurance company to ask about the payment. That, that's not grieving dad, is it? That's freaky. That's messed up, right? So, yeah, the police were having none of it. Naturally, they arrested him for the murder of his own son. He protested his innocence the entire time, but a jury took just 46 minutes to convict him of the murder of his own son. And he was sentenced to death by lethal injection, which happened on March the 30th in 1984. Um, so a long time afterwards. But yeah, so that's the Candyman killer is Ronald O'Brien, who fatally poisoned his own child with a poison pixie stick. Who, um, who knows what might have happened if the other children had taken those as well doesn't bear thinking about but it is the season of halloween if you are going trick-or-treating please be careful and it's the oldest saying in the book right but don't take sweets from strangers and if you are um collecting sweets for your kids when you go out make sure they're in wrappers like properly wrapped sweets i know the pink stick was like you know he closed it himself but make sure they're proper sweets and proper wrapped or you know just don't use poison on people, guys. Just try and have a fun time without hurting people. But have a great Halloween. Stay safe. Don't commit any crimes. And I'll see you next time. Bye.